So here we've got some data in a spreadsheet. This is a spreadsheet that's got a macro that calculates the um, uh, naked Hurst R over S rescaled range. No fancy business. Now, I can estimate the data um, for one year to show how unreliable it is compared to an hour where I can easily download 20 years data. Now I'll use one year close. This is from a data service I get. Oh, I can't do that. I've got to put in a... We're testing BAC in... I was last testing BAC in R. So we'll use that still to be consistent. That's Bank of America. Instead of S&P 500 or Russell like I usually do, the EFTs, IWM and SPY. Now when you close, so we get. Yep, we get one year close. Now we've got to sort that in reverse order. Oldest to newest. Now we'll just take um the uh, price data and you'll see how ridiculous the estimate is. We'll plonk it there. We'll run the macro. Yeah, it's taking a while. Hopefully it's not going to crash. What's going on here? Oh, there we go. And it got persistence greater than 0.5, greater than 1, random walk, anti-persistence. Look at that, 90, 91%. If you did it on prices and you saw that, you think, oh, what a trend. I'll make money. Bye, bye, bye. Up, up, up and away. Uh, that's because of, uh, for people who have come from technical trading who know nothing about statistics or maybe even people from statistics who know nothing about econometrics and have never done time series modelling, uh, because of the high order correlation in stock prices, you always use the second, you always use the difference or the returns. Now we'll estimate those quickly. Where is it here? Um, go up. Just go up. Harden Excel. Just press a log. Naperian logarithm or natural logarithm. Uh, today's price over yesterday's price gives you the geometric turns or log returns, which is what you actually want. Uh, you don't want arithmetic returns, which is the rate of change. I'll get that down. Uh, and we'll just uh, we'll sample this data and you'll see the uh, the Hearst statistic change rather dramatically. Still it'll be exaggerated compared to what it really is over 20 years. Short time periods are not good for Hearst statistics. So this will illustrate why rolling moving averages of her statistics are just ridiculous. They really are. And, oh, I forgot. Sorry, I'll do that again. Paste, paste as, bang it. Okay, now, we've got the data and we'll have to go down because there will be one extra data point from the previous price series there. And there's a few extras there that don't fit from the previous data points. All right, so I'll go up. Now we'll, re we'll calculate it again and you'll see how it changes. Thinking, thinking, thinking. Uh, you can see the change, that's pretty accurate, about 0.55 is right. Even after one year, it's still quite accurate. It's still similar to the statistics of 20 years with, the, with R and, and uh, various Hearst calculations. That is the realistic Hearst statistic. It has a slight tendency or persistence, a slight persistence. It's not exactly what you call a trend. Uh, and you see put data, e.g. log returns. Now maybe for chemical reactions or over time or uh, weather changes over time, you can put raw numbers but not for stock returns. Okay, we'll move on. 
Now we'll go to R and we'll estimate this all again. Uh, we'll move up. Fortunately, I've got this already. We've already estimated it. So, um, yeah, just for interest sake, the libraries we're concerned with are the Pragma library and the Fractal library. And library quant mod to download BAC. Call it Geom Return BAC, which is a daily log returns. Put it into variable X, and we use it in calculating our exponents. Now, the Hearst exponent, variable X, we estimate the Hearst index for the stock at hand. The first uh, method is the Hearst XBF method from the Pragma libraries, which gives a simple ROS Hearst statistics with some more experimental calculated variations. These approaches are correct. The, the first Hearst ex calculates a Hearst exponent of a time series using R over S analysis. And uh, yep, these other ones are, these approaches are a corrected R over S method, an empirical and corrected empirical method, and a tried a theoretical Hearst exponent. It should be mentioned that these results are sometimes very different. So providing error estimates will be highly questionable. So they don't. Optimal sample sizes are automatically computed with a length that possesses the most divisors among series shorter than X by no more than 1%. Uh, that's technical for those who know about how it's calculated. Now the Hearst spec from the Fractal Library is more on the lines of Benoit Mandelbrot's research, of course which it's based on, and it estimates it by a linear spectral regression function. It's estimated by a spectral density function, the Hearst coefficient estimated by a spectral regression function to estimate the Hearst parameter H of a time series by a linear regression of the log spectrum versus log frequency with frequency points accumulated into boxes of equal width on a logarithmic scale and spectrum values and averaged over each box. We then look at variation this method, the Robinson method, which I don't discuss, then two more, a simple defined ROS that uses a defined function and the AGABS method of Hearst block function. Now the AGABS method is another from the Fractal Library. It calculates greater scaled samples of the Hearst exponent then averages them. The series is partitioned into M groups. Within each M, within each group, the first absolute moment about the mean of the entire series is evaluated. A measure of the variability of this statistical measure between groups is calculated. A number of groups M is increased and the process is repeated. The observed variability changes with the increasing in a way related to, by theory, to the Hurst parameter H of the input series for the method used. Here, a log plot of variability versus number of groups is ideally linear, with the slope related to H that can be determined by linear regression. Now, um, we'll run them one by one. I usually run these as a block, but I run it one by one for um, learning purposes. Now, we'll run that. You can see the corrected Hearst statistic here. There is a definite tendency, persistence upwards. So BAC, unlike the Russell IWMA or the system P500 SPY, is not mean reverting. It has a tendency to rise. Uh, now we'll estimate her spec. And we'll do the Robinson method, her spec after that. And we get from that uh, a mean reverting tendency, they say, which is unusual. We'll try her spec Robinson method. Uh, that is even more mean reverting. We use the AGAD, the Rover S. I'm not sure. That's the one that's unreliable. I'm not sure I've got that right. As you can see, there's an error. Let's see what happens. It says 0.64, which is a huge, that's actually a trend. Um, but it doesn't exist. It always gives exaggerated returns. This is probably reliable. The Hearst block agabs method. And we'll do a plot to show it fits. And then we'll do the simple Hearst. And the simple Hearst result. 0.54, which is what it is. It's slight 10 persistence in the data. We'll go down and have a look at the data for the agabs. Which, uh, don't tell me the AGAB starter picture didn't come out. No? I have to run that again. 
I have to run the plot again. See if it comes out. There's the plot. Now it's a pretty good fit. Now what you got to adjust is uh, in the plot is this scale ratio. You got to muck around the scale ratio to get a good fit with the linear regression. Eight seem to be perfect. As you can see from that, we'll enlarge it. You see, it's not quite 100%. It shows persistence 0.533, and it's a pretty good fit for the new regression. Okay, so that's the HER statistic in R and in Excel. Uh, explains it uh, succinctly, and I'll tack on some explanations I found on the internet. And uh, this will be it. Hopefully this is a final discussion of Hearst, and I'll take the others down. Thank you. Bye.